think we're good and ready to go. Um, my name is Nick Brasi. I'm the author of Off the Back of the Truck. Contraband from the Sopranos fan was uh, published by Simon Schuster last December. Uh, it was meant to coincide with the movie, so fuck you, Warner Brothers, for pushing it back. <laughs> but the trailer was pretty fucking good. I mean, I was very happy with it. So, um, I'm pretty excited to host trivia. I think it's got some, uh, some ball breaker questions I came up with. We'll see if you guys will crush it. Um, the way this is going to work is just write your name and your cell phone number on your sheet and um, leave your answer sheet, I guess, on the clipboard on your seats. That probably makes the most sense. I'll collect them, score them. The three highest scores are going, I'll text you the prize. The prizes are, I'm providing uh, for this tribute today and tomorrow, so I a copy of the book. I've been told to buy our problem being consecrated on friends. There's a few tracksuit prize and a. Um, <laughs> That's some t-shirts. Uh, but regardless, it should be a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing, uh, playing trivia. It's a class one, which I did not win uh, a year and a half ago, so I was so pissed off I asked the host this year. And uh, my book is available for sale right over around the corner. If you guys want to come by, I'll sign them. Also, um, due to Pond Street Barbershop, my hair looked like shit this morning. It was slow. I sat down, Juliana gave me a cut, and I think we'll all agree it looks pretty fucking great. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm sitting here still going next one, but it's alright. Um, so the way the trip is the way the trip is gonna work is it gets increasingly hard. I got five questions and we've got a lot of love. What's that? Oh <laughs> <laughs> I should have drank some Sentuka. But, um, so we got to the double octa level, we got to the little poly level, then it gets a little bit harder um, with the uh, Patsy Parisi level, the Sipparetta level. And that's 20 questions, and then we got five tiebreakers in case you guys just crush it. For the first 20, there's five questions that I think are extremely hard. Uh, that'll be the last five, you know, if we gotta have any like, difference makers. But if everyone's ready to go, uh, I'll read them and give everyone a couple moments to put their answer in. And uh, you know, we'll see who's got the stuff. Ready? Yeah. All right. The first question is going to start you out super easy. What Italian swear word does Christopher Moltisanti teach Janine Garofalo? I'll accept all spellings as long as phonetically it's in the fucking ballpark. Also, if you don't know this, <laughs> Okay. Question two. Tony Blundetto, Tony B, does impressions of which famous chubby 50 sitcom star? These impressions were favored by his, his prison buddy, Angelo Baremi, and also used to offend Tony on multiple occasions. So that's one, it's one of my favorites. In Ralph Sparetto's prank call to Mary Beach Gaultier, a clip I've watched at least 500 times on YouTube. In what city does Detective Mike Hunt work? Question four. What's the name of the cocktail Ari Buko suggests to Benny Fazia at his parents' anniversary dinner? He says it goes down really easy. What's the name of the cocktail that Ari Buko suggests to Benny Fazia at his parents' anniversary dinner? Question five, another, another throwback actor question. What famous actress gets mugged for her gift basket? 
Christopher very upset, sort of thinks he's not into the movie, gets lots of stuff, decides he's not going to leave Los Angeles empty handed. He beats the shit out of a very, very talented actress. All right, we're shifting over to the little Hollywood. Question six. What brand of shotgun does Tony get his father-in-law, Hugh DeAngelis, for his 75th birthday party? This is in the episode Marco Polo, Russ Vajuli's kind of an asshole about it. <laughs> By the way, that actor Bruce Kirby, you know Kirby's father, and he's in like 20 episodes of the Wrong Turn Files, which I write about extensively in my book on the Pregnant Chart. Question 7. I wish he was in there because I'll stop the end son. Wait, Mike, at least almost walked in here and it was like, I don't want any more of this shit. <laughs> he turned right around and started on that like six minutes ago. But what is the last thing Mikey Pomisi says to his wife? He says one thing to her before he stretches and goes for his, the last job he'll ever take. That is number seven, yes. Yeah. Question eight. Eugene Pontecorvo, voice star on the corner, it's not too long ago, Robert Bernardo. Can't say enough about his performance in that uh, number one. Uh, but Eugene Pontecorvo is on to be, was married to the agents of what popular entertainer and musician? Um, it was her death that resulted in Eugene, you know, spoiler alert, getting a $2 million inheritance that he hoped to use to retire from. It's because his, his aunt was married to the agents of a very popular 50s and 60s performer, maybe 40s. Ago. Question 9. For his acting class, Christopher Maltesanti performs a scene from which very famous movie? Number 10. This will get us halfway, halfway through before the time. According to Tony Soprano, and he's right up this movie, who owns the Lionel Train Company? It's something that comes up when he's uh, complaining about Bonnie's Hop. Number 11. All the way down. What does it say on the sign that Angelo Loretti gives to Tony Blendeno when he goes to visit him in his office where he's running, uh, running the after hours casino? Yep, no problem. What does it say on the sign that Angelo Loretti gives as a gift to Tony Blendeno when he goes and visits him in the casino? Blendeno then puts it up on the wall. All right, so I'm going to catch a little, little bit of a break. Number 12. Tony and Meadow visit three colleges in Maine. Name two of them. That was number 12. Number 13 is it, it was the only question I borrowed from last year's trivia, and I got it, but I thought it was, I thought it was a ballbreaker question, which is what is Meadow Soprano's middle name? Number 14. What band is AJ going to see the night he gets his eyebrow shaved off? I was so glad I was too old to ever get shit about this pen. Number 15. 
Number 17, and I know we can't all be Italian here, so what's the name of the Jewish divorce document that Shlomo Teitelman wants Tony to get from his son-in-law? There's a special name in the Orthodox Jewish tradition for what you need to get to procure a divorce, what you need to get it from the husband. That was number uh, 17. And I gave you a clue when I just when I just did that. Oh, that was 15? Oh, I skipped one. Sorry. Alright, that was 17. So put that into 17. You think this would be that hard, or did you track that? Which was 13? 13 was what's Meadow Soprano's middle name. 14 is what band is AJC in the night he gets his eyebrow shaved off shaved off. 15 is when she goes and visits Meadow in Columbia, what Herman Melville novella do Carmela and Meadow get to think work in about? It's an argument about whether or not Melville's work has a homosexual subject. Seventeen is the Jewish divorce one, yeah. Sixteen, and let me two acceptable answers to this is this is one of my favorite scenes in the whole series. But Anna Delaciora, aka Gloria Trillo, walks on to the students at the beginning of Pine Barrens. There's a song, also titled Gloria, playing on the Stugatz stereo. What band sings that song? Or do you even sing her that band? Is it a very famous man? That would also be an acceptable answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that hard? What's up? Oh, do you get not extra for both, but I'll, but I'll, I'll be really impressed. <laughs> that was number. That was number sixteen. So seventeen, we already did. It's the so much I've been uh, Jewish divorce document question. I screwed up. Um, number eighteen. What does Kevin Finnerty sell? What is the business of Kevin Finnerty that puts him on a sales trip to Costa Mesa, California, during Tony's alter ego dreams? That's 18. Number 19, another scene I've watched 500 times on YouTube. What poker hand? Does Davies Catino have when he slow ropes Sylvia and takes the pot? I'll even tell you the other hands. Uh, Doctor Doctor Free has three twos. Silvio has three queens. Three beautiful queens, he says. But Davy, probably the only hand he won that night, has a hand that beats both of us. And number twenty, the final before the tiebreaker. What Renee Zellweger movie does Father Phil rent to watch with Carmela? Despite despite her telling him just last week that she was not a very big Renee Zellweger fan. <laughs> Thank you. Also, let me remind you that music today is an experiment, and tomorrow's questions might be real easy, much easier if everyone just thinks I'm an asshole. <laughs> um, so the Tony tiebreakers, and these these are super hard. I would use, I don't think I, if I wasn't doing it, would gotten more than one or two of these. Is how does Christopher Moltisanti misspell the word loyal in his screenplay that he's working so hard on, and he thought the computer would write for him? Must be loyal to his capo. Twenty. I think I Twenty. If you want to leave. Teens from what organization discover the body of a crazy horse murder victim on Gilbert and the Evans? This would be in the, the extremely happy and positive episode long term marketing. Where Adrian gets to do his floor seating upstate New York. So T up teams from what there's a group of kids on the beach and they're with a uh, they're with an instructor of some sort. 
Um, and they're all really organizations. It's on their, it's on their uniforms. Um, so it's the name of a group of those, of those teens that find his body on the rocks. Uh, this next one, 23, I have two answers here. What's the name of the song that Eric Scatino and Meadow practice together that is so friggin' annoying? And if you don't know the name of the song, the musical it comes from uh, is also, I think, suitable. Um, number 24, and I would accept just the first name here, uh, is who directed Cleaver? Hey, guy. You're not familiar with Cleaver's in motion picture. It was produced by Carmen Nicotazzi Jr. Screenplay by J.T. Walsh. Story by Christopher Maltesan. A man goes to pieces and comes together. So help, me out, help me out in the front row. Who knows that thing way better than me? What's, what's the tagline for Cleaver? The tagline for Cleaver about a man who comes to, who goes to pieces and comes back together again. It's like, okay. <laughs> And number 25, another another favorite YouTube scene. The wedding of Dr. Free's daughter. And I'll give partial credit for this one, but neither the maker of the model. But what is the what is the maker model of the exclusive car stolen from Dr. Free's daughter's wedding? Where the guy's brother had been on the waiting list for a fucking year. <laughs> yes. Now we succeed this with you because we're equal. Are there any numbers or questions that anyone would like repeated before we wrap up and tabulate? No problem. 18 is what does Kevin Finnerty sell? 19 is what poker hand does Davies Catino have when he slow roasts Silvio and takes the pot? It's, it's the hand where Silvio gets really, really upset about the G spot. Right, 13 is what is Meadow Soprano's middle name? 8, 12, and 20. 8, 12, and 20, no problem. 8 is Eugene Pontecorvo's Montague was married to the agent of what popular entertainer and musician? It's an old, old tiny guy. Isaiah was 12 and 20. 12 is Tony and Meadow visit three colleges in Maine. Name two of them. 20 is what Rene Zellweger movie does Father Phil Rent to watch with Carmella? I will say it was directed by Carl Franklin, who features Jane Carl Esposito who's like sitting over there in some of his other features. But I don't think he was in the answer to this question. Right. For his acting class, Christopher Moltisanti acts out a scene from which James movie? Eleven is what does it say on the sign that Angelo Reppi gives to Tony Lundell? I think as we finish up, the best, I'm trying to think about experiences on here. I figure, I figure if everyone actually brings their clipboard up here, I'll take them and do all the story and everything. Seeing as it's only 125, and before they need the room at two, I can probably get through it. Um, what's everyone's hand for the bin? That's a really good question. Let me think about that. I would say, if you see, if you see me at the, if you see me in my books after the fact, I will perform the answers. In exchange for you purchasing one time. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I hope you have fun. Uh,